is uranium a scarce resource getting scarcer in its nuclear power industry undergoing a renaissance right now well to answer that first let's take a look at where we are currently this is nuclear generation in terawatt hours from the world nuclear association what you can see is that we're getting back to our all-time highs right obviously we haven't gone down and we're in an uptrend now the big question is what is next will this uptrend continue will we get more nuclear generation uranium is the fuel for nuclear generation well let's see what's going on in the news u.s senate passes nuclear legislation that will help position country as international leader advanced act will strengthen fleet and boost deployment of advanced reactors so we're getting more reactors online the u.s government wants to invest in this space so obviously in the u.s that uptrend is going to continue welcome to the party georgia power announces vote Unit 3 is now in commercial operation. It's the first new reactor to start commercial operations since 2016 and the 93rd reactor now operating in the U.S. Just an example of the U.S. investing heavily into this space and how we're going to see more of this to come, not to mention the advanced reactor, small modular reactor technology that's being developed that's going to catalyze this growth even more. Then we have China approving six nuclear reactors, a $17 billion investment. China accounts for 23 of 55 nukes under construction globally. So yes, the answer to whether or not we're going to get an exponential increase in nuclear power generation is yes, 55 in construction globally, 23 of those in China. Then Japan, we talked about how they are turning all the reactors back on, right? Another catalyst. Well, Japan is also investing in advanced small modular reactor technology. Toshiba presents its IBR Advanced Light Water Reactor. The company presented its concept for an advanced light water reactor known as IBR. So we're in the very early stages of this brand new technology that is going to exponentially grow nuclear power generation. That speaks to demand. Let's talk about supply, right? Is it scarce? Well, this comes from Cameco's Q2 2023 report, one of the biggest uranium mining companies in the world, just came out. We have in red the demand base case and in gray the demand high case. We talked about demand growing hugely. Well, let's look at the supply in blue and light gray plummeting we're in a deficit we're about to enter a massive deficit starting in 2024 no projections to increase that because the miners have not been incentivized to so we have a very scarce resource getting scarcer and we're already starting to see an uptick in the most important metric when looking at uranium active long-term contracting starting to tick up you can see that we're starting to rebound off the lows the winter the deep winter of uranium which lasted for a long time off the lows in 2020 now we're starting to see the uptick right we're still in the early stages these are the fundamentals that matter those are supply demand fundamentals and that doesn't even get into the geopolitical issues of which there are many including this one and niger coup sends tremors through global nuclear industry uranium prices surge now why does that matter well niger accounts for 2020 metric tons of uranium production every single year and so the supply chain of this scarce resource is volatile russia Obviously, countries trying to move away from Russia. Niger, massive problems. People worried about the supply chain there. China, obviously, moving away from the U.S. Then we have Kazakhstan, most of that going to China. Canada, lots of that going to the U.S., Europe, and Canada. And then Namibia, Australia, up for grabs. But you can just see the fragility of the supply chain which just compounds the problems even further of where these brand new and existing nuclear reactors are going to get their uranium. Now, as we look to the future of nuclear power generation, we know governments are investing in green technologies. So they have to choose between hydroelectric, uranium, and solar and wind. Now, let's just take a look at one example of what is going on with the other green technologies, not nuclear power. Baseball-sized hail makes ensuring solar and wind farms pricier extreme weather events complicate 
the fight against global warming. It doesn't complicate the generation of nuclear energy, which is way more sustainable. People talk about the waste that nuclear power plants generate. No one talks about the waste that solar plants generate when their useful life is up, just toxic metals and minerals, all the land required for wind. The fact that there could be hail that damages this stuff speaks to the fact that nuclear power does win on a lot of different levels, but compared to the rest of the green energies. So we're staying on top of this market.